Hey guys, and welcome to the Sova Log. So there's been some talk about Borderlands 2, Civilization 5, other games being listed on Amazon as supporting Linux and coming to Linux. Borderlands 2 should have been here as early as yesterday, October 8th. I can't tell for the life of me whether it's true, whether it actually is supporting Linux now. I know it's not showing up in my Steam list as supporting Linux, neither Civilization 5, and we haven't really heard any official announcements from the companies, so I'm really thinking that if it's true, it's great. We have some AAA publishers and developers who are actually supporting Linux on a serious basis now. But if it's not true, which most likely it's not true, should Amazon really have said that it supports Linux? We know both of these games run under Linux using the Wine software emulation. The problem with that being that it's not a native port, so it technically doesn't support Linux. If you go on their support forums and say, I'm running this on Linux using Wine, they will probably say Wine is unsupported. So that technically doesn't support Linux at all. So I'd say that's a little bit of false advertising. And we might have to get mad at Amazon a little bit for that false advertising. So to follow that up, we have many flavors of Linux gamers. Uh, there's the dual booters, the Wine gamers, and the diehard native gamers. Now these three categories are all very different from each other. and I kind of fall under the more of the dual boot, unfortunately, at this point. I am going more diehard native. I will be doing some wine gaming. I'll be experimenting with that in the future. But really, at this point, there's the dual boot, which is probably the most common. They do their work on Linux. They play their games on Windows. And that's really because Linux doesn't have the support for the games they want to play. And it's less of a moral issue for them. I know for me it's less of a moral issue and more of a I just need to relax and play a game. And in some cases, like for the Skyrim series, I just need to be able to record a game easily and have it just work. Now the problem being, because I'm running these games under Windows, the Linux support is probably never going to get there. That is an issue. I would rather there be Linux ports, but at the same time, I'm not going to jip myself the experience of a great game simply because the company has failed to see the light and is failing to support Linux at this point. And then we have Wine Gamers. This is another very common, common group of gamers on Linux. Wine is a software compatibility layer to run Windows software on Unix-like systems. So that's Linux, Unix, BSD, even Mac OS X. It has some great support for games. I won't lie to you. There's a special version of Wine out there for World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft runs pretty much as if it was a native installation using the Wine compatibility there. It's, it's a great piece of kit. But sometimes it can be very tricky to make it work appropriately. Um, I've tried it multiple times with Skyrim and I'm constantly encountering performance issues. There's some people who claim they have it running 60 frames a second or 120 frames a second on their 120 hertz monitors with no issues at ever using Wine. I gotta call BS on that because you're not going to get the same experience on Wine as running it natively on Windows. You won't be able to turn the graphics as high. And for a game like Skyrim, that can really affect the immersion and really take away from the game itself. Uh, there's some other software where it'll start working great and then all of a sudden stop working. And a good example of this is Mojang's Scrolls. Uh, when that was initially released on beta, it would install. You just had to do one little quick tweak and it would work no problem. But now, after many updates, you actually have to go into the game folder and unzip the contents of the game yourself. Uh, so there... They're kind of going backwards in that direction. Uh, there are some things to help you get over these little performance gaps, though, and these little tricky installations. Um, there's software called Play on Linux, which is a GUI interface to Wine. It really just enhances the experience by saying, I want to install this game from this location. You can even give it uh, good old games login information, and it'll fetch your game for you from good old games. Download it and then install it and you can just play. So software like that is great to use. There's also Crossover by Code Weavers, which really adds support for a lot of games. That's a commercial license. 
and they do contribute a lot back to wine. So eventually it all works under wine. But at the same time, I'm not going to spend $60 on a game and then $30 on a piece of software to play that game in my free operating system. When for the most part, Windows has come with PCs. I have built my own PC. I did have to buy Windows for it, but at the same time, I'm a technician, so I need to have multiple copies of multiple operating systems just to help customers troubleshoot their issues. So in Wine, there is usually a large performance hit, which is a big deterrent to serious gamers using Wine. Is there really such thing as a serious gamer on Linux? Oh, you better believe it. We have lots of good, hardcore, competitive games, especially Dota 2 now running natively on Linux. It's unacceptable in my mind to use Wine and take that performance hit, especially when you're trying to have fun and trying to have a great experience in Linux. And then you have the diehard native gamers. They will only, only play a game if it has a either a native port or was originally developed to play on Linux. Now, this is great, and it's starting to become better overall. It's starting to actually get to where it needs to be for this to be an actual thing. We've got different companies like Unity uh, compiling for Linux now. They're, they have that software development kit, uh, game development studio, whatever you want to call it, that Kerbal Space Program uses, and as soon as the ability to compile for Linux was enabled, they did it, and now they have a native Linux version available on Steam. Oil Rush, which was actually developed by the Unity developers, is the same thing. Uh, they have they've made it completely available to Linux. And it's really not a bad game. You'll see that coming up soon. I, I try my hand at it. It definitely has the best com performance compared to the other options. Um, yes, even dual booting, best performance. I say that because Linux is a excellent multitasker. It's better than Windows, in my opinion, at multitasking. Uh, for instance, right now I am recording this Sova log while I'm rendering a video and editing some pictures at the same time. I'm also rendering some Blender renders in the background. So really, Linux is doing great. It's running all of these high-end programs and it's not struggling at all to do so. So it's been proven that Linux gamers will pay more for their games. We don't need the cheap deals the way that a lot of Windows gamers use. If you look at the Humble Indie Bundle, for instance, Linux gamers average the highest sale price for this set-your-own-price gaming store, if you want to call it that. Um, we are always probably a good 25-50% above our Windows and Mac OS X counterparts. And that number is just still rising. We're willing to support the platform that we prefer, which means that we're willing to pay more, especially because we didn't have to spend $150 on an operating system that locks you into its own ecosystem. Yes, I'm talking to you, Windows 8. Don't like Windows 8. So with when there's commercial support for a Linux title, and it's on Linux natively, it tends to sell very quickly and a lot. Uh, I know... There's a lot of games out there that a lot of Linux users have bought that are really horrible games. They're crappy. I'm not going to give any examples. I don't want to badmouth anybody, but they're terrible games. And just to show support for the company developing on their platform of choice, they have bought that game. It's, it's quite common, really. Uh, I don't blame them at all. I've been guilty of that myself a couple of times. Uh, when Desira came out, I bought, I think, maybe six Linux titles, none of which I have actually played yet, just because they're developed for Linux, and they look interesting. They look like they'll be good once development is finished. I'm waiting for the point when their development cycle is done before I jump in and play them. Uh, Towns is an example of this. It's still going through some heavy development. Same with Project Zomboid. I haven't played either of those yet. Uh, I might jump into Project Zomboid soon, but haven't tried it yet. Now, big news last week was Valve and its three announcements of SteamOS, Steam Machines, formerly known as Steamboxes, and their Valve controller, 
the Steam controller. Now, this is something Valve's been doing openly for quite a while. They dislike Windows 8 just as much as I do, and they're pushing that Linux become the next gaming platform. Uh, I don't think that they're going to be able to tell devs, you must develop for this platform. That's not really in their best interest, because they want to still make money on the Steam platform. That's their big money maker is Steam. But they'll probably have some kind of incentive program. Uh, maybe they get a higher cut of the sales or something. I don't know. Again, I'm just, this is all speculation, but still. If Valve really wants SteamOS and Linux in general to become the next true gaming platform, they are going to have to do something to convince developers to start working on it, especially if they're going for AAA titles. Uh, that takes a lot of work. It takes years of development. And to tell a AAA, you need to port this now or it's not going to be on Steam, kind of doesn't make sense to Valve because then, here you go, EA Origin, you start making more money, which just sucks because EA Origin is horrible. Now, with SteamOS, they've announced a couple of things besides the AAA title support, although they still haven't announced what games or development studios or publishers are supporting that, they have announced that you'll be capable of streaming all of your games from your PC to your Steam box, or to your Steam machine, or to Steam OS in general. This is a great stopgap measure. This means that all those AAA games that everybody loves to play, that currently they can only play on PC, or Xbox, or PlayStation 3, they'll now be able to play on their television using SteamOS streaming from their main PC. In my opinion, this is really just a stopgap measure. This isn't the final solution. This isn't a way for them to really push Linux as a gaming console or as the operating system of choice for gamers. No, what they're doing with this is making it so that when SteamOS is released, as soon as it comes out, when nothing is developed for it yet, you still have something to play with it. So, at the very least, this means that there's going to be lots and lots of people. I Honestly, I can't give you a number on that. But there's going to be a lot of people who just install SteamOS on a PC they have lying around just to stream games so they can play on their television. Uh, this is where Steam Big Picture comes into play, right? Because... I'm pretty sure a lot of people haven't gone and bought a huge gaming PC and simply hooked it up to their television in order to use big picture mode. I know big picture mode for me is still having some problems on Linux. It just doesn't work. I'm running Fedora right now, and it didn't even work on Ubuntu, so I'm not sure where they're going with that. But it's a great stopgap measure, and hopefully will lead to a lot of good developments in the future as people see, and developers most importantly, see how many people are actually making use of SteamOS, at least for streaming, and how it might help them to develop natively for SteamOS. Now, how scared should Microsoft be with Valve making this big push? Right now, I would say not at all. Uh, developers are still developing pretty much solely for Microsoft platforms, then they'll port it to OS X and Linux. Um, they have a huge, huge market share in the form of DirectX, which a lot of developers are using. And they have better hardware support in general, uh, as far as proprietary drivers go, AMD drivers and NVIDIA drivers for graphics cards, um, until the open source drivers catch up and at least are on par with the performance of their closed source alternatives, I really think that Microsoft is going to still have the advantage with this. And Valve really isn't large enough to change the ecosystem overnight. It's going to take years before this really takes effect. Uh, early adopters are going to get screwed over at the beginning, and then it's all going to level out. The same thing when Steam was originally released. Uh, there was a lot of problems with it, right? And I'm sure there's, they're going to have the same growing pains with SteamOS and their Steam machines. Now, SteamOS will theoretically let users create their own Steam machine. Uh, like, I have a system here with a pretty good graphics card, not the greatest, of course, 
but a pretty good graphics card just waiting for the release of SteamOS. I'm going to download it, install it on its own machine, and I'm really going to try it out. I think this is going to be great. Um, it's the idea you'll be able to play on your couch, make your own console, upgrade it when you want to, and if you have extra money lying around, then you can get a much better fidelity, graphics, and audio fidelity, and network performance than Xbox or PlayStation. And the nice thing is, when Xbox One and PlayStation 4 are really old, then you'll be able to upgrade your own console. Not the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, obviously, but you'll be able to upgrade your Steam machine and keep playing your old games as well as your new games. You don't have to worry about incompatibilities between software versions. That's one of the great things about Linux in general. Even using the Wine emulation layer, I can play Windows games that worked in Windows 95 and 98 on my Linux machine that Windows 8 will just laugh at. A good example of this is uh, Might and Magic 7. Might and Magic 6, they're two of my favorite RPG games. If you haven't played them, head on to GOG and get them. They're worth it, trust me. And now the Steam machines themselves. Uh, Valve has announced that they're going to be giving away 300 Steam machines to lucky beta testers, as well as their Steam gamepad. Now this is a the direct attempt on Valve's part to kick Microsoft and Sony out of your living room. And while it's going to be very slow in happening, there's a very good chance that in the future it actually will happen, that Valve will take over your living room space. Is this a good thing? Well, it's never really a good thing to let one company have complete control of a certain space. Like Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo competing with each other has kept console prices somewhat low, not as low as I would like, I'm not rich or anything. As soon as, say, Microsoft or Sony beats the other, prices are going to skyrocket. That's just a simple fact. That's economics. As demand goes up for a system, then the price can go up. That's kind of the way it works. That's the entire free market system in action. Uh, if you can't sell something at a high price point, then the price gets lowered. So by keeping those consoles active and fighting each other the price comes down this is where the steam machine could have a bit of an issue because it's more powerful it's upgradable which means that basically it's going to be really expensive like the whole the piston from xi3 uh, that's now going to be selling for a thousand dollars and honestly i don't see why anybody's going to pay that price just to play some PC games on their TV when they can go out and get an Xbox One or a PS4 when they're released for $600 and buy games with it at the same time. Now the Steam Pad itself, the Game Pad, is very intriguing to me. When I saw it and I saw that it had touch pads instead of the analog sticks, I thought, wow, finally this paradigm is changing. We're going to go away from the twin stick style of control. That's not quite the way it's going to be. They, While they've changed them with touchpads, it's really just to better simulate mouse movement. So you'll still move your thumb around as if it's an analog stick, but you'll get some more fine grain control. And they have haptic feedback enabled on these touchpads, which means you'll really understand what's happening. You'll figure it out a little better. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to be, if it's going to be vibrations or if it's going to be sound or a mixture of the two. But you'll then know what the difference between walking and running is just by either what you feel or what you hear coming from your control. They have worked it out so that supposedly this gamepad will rebind to any game you have in your Steam library and they even went so far as to showing a picture of people playing Civilization V using the Steam gamepad on their television. I'm not sure how it's going to work with the strategy game. Uh, I'd like to see somebody try their hand at StarCraft II with this, to be honest. Then it would convince me. 
but it's a very intriguing idea that you might actually be able to get the accuracy you're used to with a mouse and keyboard on a gamepad. That's something I'm going to look at, and as soon as I'm able to get my hands on one, I'm going to, and I will let you know how it feels. Uh, right now, of course, nobody has actually tried one. Um, when the reviews start coming out, after the beta machines get released, I'm sure we'll see that there's going to be some issues with it. That's just the way it works, especially when, when it's a beta. So overall, I think that Valve has proven it has what it takes to change gaming. They did that with Steam. They moved things from brick and mortar to online. The majority of games are released online, and a lot of games don't sell very well if they're not available on Steam. That's a simple fact at this point. Uh, but they've also proven that they can be trusted for the most part with Gaming Future. They're not in it, well, they are in it for the money, but they're not in it simply to keep the status quo. They're in it to change things. They're in it to advance gaming as a whole, which really says a lot about their company and their mindset as a whole. It works quite well for them. And now I have a schedule. I have actually sat down and made a schedule that I'm going to be following as closely as possible for video releases and for recording. So for today, I have scheduled that I'll have a Winning Wednesdays video out of Dota 2. I've played it before, but I'm going to record some Dota 2 for you. And I'll put that up, and that'll be recorded on Linux, which is wonderful. I love being able to do that. Uh, I have a regular schedule started up. On Mondays, you'll see a new episode of Skyrim released. On Tuesdays is when I'm going to try and get my Sova logs out. I was a little busy yesterday, so didn't quite get it out on time. Getting that done now for you, though. On Thursdays, I'll have Gaming with Dad. Oh, I forgot all about Wednesdays. Wednesdays will be my winning Wednesdays, where I play a new game and try it out. And if you guys like it, then maybe turn it into a series. We'll see at that point, right? So Thursdays, I'll have my Gaming with Dad coming back. Uh, that won't be this Thursday. Dad and I have had conflicting schedules as far as recording times, but I'm sure we'll get back to it this weekend, hopefully. On Fridays, I'll have Serious Sam 3 videos coming out to you. And on Saturdays, I'm going to do some setups. Now, what this means is it's a game that not that I haven't recorded before, but that I have never, ever actually played before. Um, I'm going to call it a Setup Saturday because it's really just going to be kind of me fooling around in a game, setting myself up to have some fun with it. Uh, it's not going to be extraordinarily long series or extraordinarily difficult for any of these games. But, for instance, this Saturday I will have Fez being put up. Um, Fez, of course, a lot of controversy around that on the Xbox 360. And I figure I'd give it a try on PC through Linux and we'll see how it works. So that's going to be the upcoming schedule and as well as my regular schedule from now on. I'll have content Monday through Saturday going up. I won't have anything on Sundays though. That's going to be the day that I relax and take it easy and just spend time with the family. So, if you have any comments or requests, I'm not averse to taking requests as far as playthroughs go. Leave it in the comments, let me know. Uh, as always, like and fave this video, so hopefully I can grow the channel. Let me know if you like things or don't like things, and I'll talk to you later.